An issue we've warned about before on this program is the growth in borrowing by self-managed superannuation funds to buy property. Now the Reserve Bank has voiced its concerns. It's worried about an increase in speculative demand for property as well as the risks for both superannuation funds and the financial system. Well, with that background, I thought it was time to check in again with financial planner Claire McKay, who's long warned of the dangers of self-managed super and borrowing. Claire, as everybody knows, property is a very attractive investment, but it really needs to be done with caution, and particularly in super, doesn't it? Property is like any other investment. Before you invest in it, you have to understand how it fits in your overall investment strategy, the specific property itself and its fundamentals, your exit strategy, so long-term investment or is it a three to five year investment, and then the structuring. Within super, you're right, there are specific rules around that, and if you're overlaying debt, there's another structure over that as well. So it's a complex area, and understanding those fundamentals, as well as who you partner with in helping you implement that plan, is really important. Well, just fleshing that out a bit, if you are planning to use your self-managed superannuation fund to buy property, what are the things, and particularly the risks, you need to consider? Well, I guess the key risk is that if you, how much of your overall super is going to be in that one property. There's concentration risk. If that's your sole asset in super, that's a, that's a big risk. If you're then overlaying debt to fund the acquisition, that increases the risk yet again. And then there's the, the, the actual implications of the structuring and getting that right. If you get the, the paperwork wrong, you could be up for double stamp duty and things like that. So there are steps that you need to go through before you rush into something like that. What level of debt is acceptable for a self-managed super fund buying property? It comes down to the overall situation and how much is sustainable in that client scenario. How much debt they have outside of super, but also within the super fund, what is a sustainable amount of debt that can be repaid within the assets of the fund. And just following on from that, what damage can you do to a fund if it all goes wrong? Well, because financiers require personal guarantees, worst case scenario is your property goes down in value, you can't repay on the debt, you have to sell the investment, it's not enough to repay the, the loan, so then you're called upon your personal assets, so you lose both potentially your retirement funds and you put at jeopardy your existing assets for your family. Now we know that property spruikers are out there offering deals that are, are, are sound too good to be true and in most cases they are, but isn't it true that uh, there's no substitute for doing things the right way, for want of a better way to put it, using proper real estate agents, getting proper independent advice and not taking shortcuts and being lured in by these spruikers? Well I think that some of those organisations make it sound very easy and very straightforward and, and quite sexy. Now property investment can be interesting and can be exciting, but there's nothing, nothing replaces good old fashioned research and preparation and planning and working with experts in their fields. So that's a really important thing for anyone considering this strategy. Make sure you're working with people who are technically expert in this area. Claire McKay, thank you very much for those thoughts. Thank you very much, Andrew.